Hey, it's Topham, and I'm just introing this show because I accidentally called the show once we started the wrong name. I called it Topham Chats, whereas this is an episode of Community Notes. Anyway, without further ado, here is the episode. Enjoy. Hello, and welcome to Topham Chats, the show where I chat to various members of the Rooster Teeth community about music. Hey, I'm one of those. Wow, awesome. (laughs) This week, my guest is... Brandon or Telemon, is that right? Yeah, that's Pronounce good enough. That right? Yeah, from the Rooster Teeth community. Hey, man, how's it going? I'm doing good. How about you? Yeah, I'm doing pretty well. You sound like you're doing good. Yeah, I'm. I'm always doing good though. So <laughs> it's, it's there's nothing different about any other of the times. Well, here I thought I was getting a unique interview. <laughs> <laughs> oh well, <laughs> we'll see. So let's jump straight into it. What is the first choice of song you've had? Where you've had? A free choice to choose anything you want. Sure, sure. I'm actually going to go with the song Playing With Fire by uh, the band Emery. Uh, The reason I chose that song is because it was one of the first songs of kind of an alternative genre that really, I don't know, it really threw me for a loop. It It was a completely different approach to what could have been conceived as the screamo genre, but it was, it, it, it had movements in it. It had like, it would go from these kind of brash, harsh vocals back into sweeping, like soft melodic vocals, and it played with the back and forth element, uh, so subtly that it it kind of entranced me, and it made me realize, man, I want to do that. <laughs> ah, like if, nice. If I, yeah, it's like if I I I, I think I want to I think I want to write music now. <laughs> Ah, cool. There's a really fantastic beat underneath it as well. Yeah, it's kind of got a stagger rhythm at the beginning of it. And as a drummer, I heard that and I thought, I don't know if I can do that. I don't know if I can trick my brain into playing the offbeat like that. So it's just so well put together. Like, yeah. And I listened to it just to get ready for this. And I was like, wow, that's a really, really awesome track. And, you know, it's it's interesting. Um, I I gave you that track as, as the one that I, I would, you know, as my as my general choice, I picked Emery just, I was like, okay, I know I'm going to pick an Emery song because they've, they've influenced me a lot. It was either that one or Edge of the World. And uh, I went with Playing With Fire because it was from the first album that I heard of theirs. And it became such, like, the, the question is the name of the album. It was, it was so um, inspirational to me as an album, as, as, as what I wanted to become in writing my music, that, uh, and, and my view of what music could be. That that's actually what I named my son. As a result, was Emery. That was uh, that is where the I first heard the name, and that's kind of what inspired me to keep that name in my family. Wow! Wow! That's yeah. a that's a really cool story. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm br- I'm bringing out the heavy guns for my first choice. <laughs> yeah, nice. <laughs> I promise. The rest are really superficial. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, let's move on with that song specifically. Is that the style of music that you tend to gravitate towards, or was it? something different about no, that it was that grabbed you different. and I'm yeah, sorry, I'm did sorry, it I didn't draw you into a di- did it draw you into a different scene of music as well to explore it it drew me into a different style of music absolutely uh because up until that point i i listened to mostly uh kind of pop rock or actually i, I grew up on on christian music pretty much only that was the family that i grew up in and um and it was, you know, it, I mean, that's if you want to be a songwriter, you need to diversify. <laughs> you need to, you need to hear different kinds of music, and experience the different concepts within the music. Uh, otherwise, you're going to be pretty stunted. And I didn't, I didn't end up at Emory by chance. I had a friend introduce me and uh, introduce me to the uh, the music, and it kind of sucked me into a different, a different couple of genres where I don't spend a lot of time in screamo anymore. Uh, I still pick up any El- Emory album that comes out because. You know, or just kind of brand loyalty, if you will. But um, no, Emery was kind of one of the first bands that I started listening to that was different from the pop rock or the kind of mainstream, as it were. Ah, oh, wicked. So um, let's move on to the next track, and then sure. I'll probably hopefully touch on some of the things you've already mentioned. There's already <laughs> been so much to go on. So... um. Can you talk about a track that I've asked you to choose that you find motivating? Sure, sure. Well, um, it's a band that I found more recently. Um, they're only on their second, their second 
uh, release right now, or their second uh, label release, as it were. And uh, one of my favorite songs on the album, it's called Love Me Now, and it's by the band Nine Lashes. It's, it's, it's a, they're a rock band. They don't do typical, uh, like particularly unique rock, I wouldn't say. They just do it really well. And the song Love Me Now, I especially like because it's got this, um, it's got this like marching band snare uh, through the verses and this kind of icy piano loop. And it's one of those songs that when I, when I think motivation, um, I'm not thinking like when we had talked before you had, you had mentioned like motivate, like in the way of going to the gym or something, you take one look at me and that's not what, (laughs) that's not something I get motivated to do. Um, when I think motivation, I think more along the lines of what gets me in the mood to want to sit down and write music. Cause that's, that's, that's my motivation is I, sometimes I need something to kick my butt and say, when's the last time you actually <laughs> did something musical? You know, uh, do you really need to watch another episode of the office? I, I don't think so. That's garbage in your brain. Why not you do something constructive with the, the thing you claim to love and the song love me now it's just got so many elements in it that, you know, it starts out kind of melodic, um, but has like this consistency in the, in the marching snare. And it jumps over to, um, it jumps over to this like multi-layered vocals with, um, with kind of a, a, a distorted synthesized um, orchestral sound in the back. And then it jumps into rock right after the chorus. And it's one of those songs where I hear the movements. It's just like, I, I I think I have to pick up a guitar now. <laughs> I don't think I could just sit down anymore. <laughs> ah, wicked. So it you said it motivates you to pick up instruments and really yeah, just it's like oh, get I gotta going go do with that now. <laughs> um, what instruments? I know you've already mentioned drums and guitar. What mm-hmm. aside from that, are there any other instruments? And what is it about those instruments? And oh, let's let's start with I guess when did you pick up those instruments? Sure, the, uh, sure. Guitar and drums specifically for now. Sure. Uh drums I've been playing since well since I was a little kid. Um we have we have video of me playing on this little tiny little electronic kit when I was four years old and I was holding a four four rhythm. I don't know if you count that really as drumming, it was more just doing exactly what my dad told me to do. But um in any case, I I really started actively practicing and saying I wanted to, to be a drummer when I was seven. So that was, uh, yeah, about 18 years ago, probably, give or take. Um, so that's that's definitely my primary instrument. Uh, I picked up the electric guitar because my mom had a spare one lying around. It's, it's, it's an old brand called Fox. Uh, two X's and an E, I think. Um, <laughs> not Fox, like the racing brand. Fox, Fox guitar, this old creature that looked a little, it looks a little bit like an Ibanez. Um, I was like, well, it looks kind of cool. It's old. I think I'll try to learn to play it. And, uh, cause I was sick of, I was sick of the concept of just, just being a drummer. I say that as if it's a bad thing, but it was more like I wanted to do something besides, uh, just beating skins with sticks. If you catch my meaning, I was like, I wanted to do something with some melody, uh, do something on a different creative level. So I thought I'll, I'll try the electric guitar and, um, I had some fun with it, but it was really basic, you know, just kind of, hey, power chords, yay. Um, and it kind of petered out for me because it just didn't hold weight until I picked up an acoustic guitar, and I think I was probably around 16, and I was like, oh, I get it now. This is what I want to do. I want to I want to play this now. And uh, because it felt like it really forced me to focus solely on how does the melody sound, not playing with all the sound effects and stuff. Not that that's not cool, but that wasn't where it I wanted to start. I wanted to start with creating melody. And uh, that was, that was, yeah, that was around 16, I think. So uh, I, I, I started it on the electric guitar again once I'd learned some melody and stuff. I think when I was around 17 or 18. But yeah, drums and guitar and vocals came along just as a, as a byproduct. <laughs> ah, cool. Vocals came along as an accident. <laughs> ah, nice. Um, Again, I think we'll touch on those in a few minutes after sure. you've told us about your next song that you've had free choice over. What is it and why did you choose it? Sure. The song, uh, I'll go a second here, is Pins and Needles by the band Mute Math, one of my absolute favorite bands, if not my favorite band. Um, I picked this song because it's just this, 
it's really mellow. It's ambiental. Uh, it plays off this major key vibe, but with a lot of kind of ethereal minor key whines and hums in the background. And it's just got, I think, one of the greatest vocal hooks by one of the most underrated vocalists I've ever heard. Uh, Paul Meany is their vocalist. He's just incredible. He's got so much soul in his voice. And um, it's one of those songs that it it's a little hard sometimes to pick out what they're saying, but when it comes to the chorus, I just love the hook. It's, uh, uh, I find I grow fond of broken people uh, as I learn that I am one of them. And yeah, that concept of your, why act as if you're better than anybody? You're no better than anybody. You find that you grow closer to people and you, you enjoy the company of, a company of people more when you stop seeing yourself as above them. Uh, yeah, it's definitely, uh, it was just, like when I listened to it, it was, it really stood out to me that the whole, the whole of the song just worked so well together and just the vocals were exactly on point and where you'd expect them to be, mm-hmm. not just from the standpoint of, oh, that's where you'd expect the vocals to go. Not exactly. But yeah. the fact that the lyrical content just all, it all just swelled together and it just works so well. And you know, some bands miss that mark. Um, there there are some bands where I hear it and I'm like, listen, I like your lyricism and I like your music, but boy, they just don't go together. The song that you're singing does not match the song you're playing. And then every once in a while you hear a song and I'll, I'll touch on this Morgan later as one of the mm-hmm. other songs I picked, but that's one of those songs that boy, it all just, it's cohesive. <laughs> it all matches. And uh, when you hear a song that really truly does that, it sucks you in hard. And, uh, it sticks in your brain as a result. Yeah, definitely. Um, so stepping back again, mm-hmm. I guess. Um, you said that you picked up. I think you said it was your mother's guitar. Yeah, yeah, it was my mom's so old guitar. Are you from a musical family? I would assume so. Mm-hmm. Uh, yes. Yeah. yeah. My dad. My dad has played drums since he was in high school. Uh, my mom is a singer and plays guitar. Had played played guitar for a long time she kind of backed off um my cousin is a piano prodigy uh he would never call himself that but i can call him that because i'm proud (laughs) of him um yeah yeah my whole family loves and is involved with music Ah, cool i thought yeah that's something that i find a lot like a lot of people who to me seem to excel in music just come from musical families anyway it's Whereas, it's definitely it's definitely an upside. I'll tell you that. Yeah, there's all all these resources that you can use instantly. Mm-hmm. You just be like, I need some help with this, and there's people readily available. <laughs> there's ten like, people oh, going. Oh, hey, I know how to do that. <laughs> awesome. So, uh, let's talk about lyrics and singing for a moment, mm-hmm. because I I've heard one of your tracks where you uh, you played the acoustic guitar part and you sang mm-hmm. over the top of it. Um, how did you get started by Sing, like singing and how has your process of writing lyrics and singing and finding the vocal melodies Im- evolved as you've had more time to work on them sure sure um I, you know like i said i, I kind of came by vocals accidentally uh i was in jam band with a couple guys and we came to the point where we were having fun just making random riffs and stuff but we thought it'd be fun to try to write a song and um, I realized pretty quickly that um, a couple of the other guys, the lyrics that they came up with, it wasn't that they were bad. It's just that they weren't fitting the kind of stuff we were trying to write. It was one of those cohesion things like I was talking about. Yep. And I found that the stuff I was writing kind of fit. Like we all came to that conclusion. So we put it to like we, we would look at the lyrics that I had written and we matched it up with okay, we're going to just record the guitar and we're going to see who can fit it best. Well, I wrote it and I kind of knew what music I wanted to set it to. Even though I didn't write the riff, I knew what I wanted it set to. So in my head, I kind of already heard how it should sound. It was just a matter of trying to match that sound and it, I, it turned out I was the only one who came close. Um, ironically, that style of singing is is way farther away than I expected. Uh, I'm way farther away from that style than I expected now. 
because uh, I started out with like hard rock with kind of screaming vocals, and I'm ending up now where I I really don't want to do any screaming at all. I want it to I want it to fit a more maybe acoustic or acoustic alternative vibe, and um, it's it's funny because the only reason that happened is because I was the only one who kind of had a, an image of how the melody should go with the guitar, and I can't explain why. Like I was a little afraid that it happened because I'd already heard that before. I, I was a little worried that that was what was going on. It's like, wait, you just copied blank, like this particular song. That that whole uh, melody line you pulled out was this song. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's always interesting to see, like, especially if people get things on their first take, like the instinct that clearly <laughs> you must have had in that in uh, in that moment to be like, this is how I want it to go, and this is how I want it to sound. <laughs> instinct with a lot of music is really fascinating as to how sometimes the first take is as close as you want to be in a demo setting. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. then everyone after it just has small slight things off that just need a bit of tightening up and it just takes forever. And like in the demos, you just can't get them right as you want them to be. But. Yeah. Yeah, I, I know what you're saying. And that happened quite a few times where it's like, okay, I guess my take is the one we're going with again. <laughs> And it got to the point where it's like, all right, I can't drum and sing at the same time. I just can't do it. I'm not talented like that. Hats off to folks like Aaron Gillespie, the drummer from Under Oath, uh, who's on the Almost and on his own now. He can do that. Some people can. Yeah, uh, he can. I can't separate my brain that way. I just can't. It's, it's bad enough that I have my right hand, my left hand, my right foot, and my left foot all doing their own thing as, as you need to do it to be a drummer. My vocal cords all at the simultaneously would just say, uh, no, we're not going to let you do both. <laughs> pick one or the other you know it's it's a fickle creature for me at least yeah i can totally understand that okay let's move on to a track that inspires you what is it and how does it inspire you sure sure well uh as i was saying before about motivation this time i went with uh, when i when i was looking at what inspires me this is a song that i picked that inspires me um as far as elements I want to involve in my music. And that song is It's Not Enough by Dustin Kensru, who you may or may not know was the vocalist for the band Thrice, um, which is a band I, I loved for a long time. Um, and he broke off and he released an album on his own. I think Thrice is just on hiatus, but he, in any case, he released a song on his own, uh, an album on his own. And the song It's Not Enough is... It's, I don't know, it sounds like a biography uh, in the way that he's doing it. Um, because there is so much, I, I want to say heart, but it's more like pain in the song. And not like in the emo sense of the word pain, but more like in the, uh, I don't know, like he's trying to convey a message to keep you from doing what he did, if that makes sense. And the whole concept of the song, it's right, it's right in the name of the song. It's this pursuit of success and what is conceived as, as uh, perceived as, as success being a moving standard that you'll never quite attain. He even talks in there about like having the, the uh, adoration of, of tons and tons of people and finding that it just didn't satisfy him. It just wasn't, it wasn't enough. And he does come at it from, from, the, from a Christian perspective. It is a Christian song on a worship album, but it's got weight outside of the mere concept of religion. It's got, you know, it's got application outside of just, you know, <laughs> where do you think you go when you die? It's not, it's not a song that can be curtailed to that. What I take it to be, um, and what I apply it to in my songwriting is what kind of song needs to be written? What, what do you have the conviction? Do you have the ability, the, uh, the wherewithal to share your heart in such a way as that when someone hears it, they're gripped in such a fashion that, that they hear inside your voice, not only a lesson, but the fact that you have personal experience in that, you know, that, that this is something that, this is something that took hold of you and you're trying to keep them from falling into the same, either the same trap or, or help you see how to better do something because they've experienced the negative effect of it or, or 
you know, like on, on the other side of things, maybe on the brighter side of things, uh, a positive, <laughs> on the positive side of things, um, something that, hey, uh, I did this and it has a good result. You should try this. <laughs> um, and th- when I hear a song like It's Not Enough, it inspires me to be genuine in my own songwriting, to not be afraid to write a song that might be considered polarizing, you know, um, whether it's stylistically or lyrically, just to be honest, because that's exactly what I hear in a song like this. Ah, cool. So you talked about like elements to incorporate from this kind of song. Is it mm-hmm. purely lyrical or are you looking at musically? There's something interesting there that I could incorporate or there's like, um, I, d- I don't know what I'm, where exactly you're trying to pull um, inspiration, inspiration from. Is it from the from the, the lyrical lyrics. content? Yeah, it is. Okay. In this case, it's definitely lyrical content. And it's not that I don't have an appreciation for the rest of the song, it's, but it's very minimal. And he does achieve something with that minimal nature as well, where it's not, you know, there's nothing to get in the way of it. There's nothing to get in the way of, of the lyrics in this song. It's just kind of a, a gradual swell of, of a real basic percussion in the background and, and just kind of a, I don't know, a reverbed piano. It, it just kind of feels the song even in its own way kind of feels empty, which is kind of the feel that he's kind of going for. I'm saying kind of a lot. I realize now mm-hmm. um, it, it's definitely the vibe he's going for is, is kind of an empty feel. And he nails that head on, not only with the music, but with his lyrics. And I love that. Uh, like we were talking about before, before the cohesion, but ultimately the thing I pull from that song is lyrical integrity as you were, you know? Yeah. Cool. Right. Uh, let's move on to the last song that you've chosen. The last song you've had free choice over. What is it and why do you enjoy it? Sure, sure. I went with the song All of Me by the brand, uh, the band Project 86, which was another band that was I, I found uh, when I was finally diverting from listening to just mainstream, as it were. Um, Project 86 were a, a band that was pretty influential to the kind of music that I was going to want to write early on. I'm not there now, but still I drew, I drew quite a bit of uh, inspiration from their lyricism, from their style of music. It made me want to think outside the box in that way. And the song that I picked that best represents that to me is the song, all of me, as I said. And um, I don't know, it's just got this great driving um, drum beat that, um, that, that really carries the whole song. And no one does vocals to me in the in the more alternative hard rock post hardcore blah 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 genres than Andrew Schwab um he's just got this ferocity and um it's one of the few bands that i listen to still that i'm 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 not i don't shy away from the ferociousness <laughs> uh, uh, a lot of the other bands that i used to listen to that were more hard rock or post hardcore i've kind of shied away from now because it's not the songs i want to write anymore not that i don't hold them in in value or anything it's just that i don't i try to minimize that because i want to try to match a different vibe but boy project a6 i still listen to and the song all of me i still listen to it it, it's still in my uh my favorites playlist as it were um because it just it's kind of a bone rattler to me (laughs) it's got a great message in it um but i i couldn't even really tell you all of the concepts behind it because i usually just get sucked into the way it sounds (laughs) Cool. Right, let's take a step back from that um, from that side of music, I guess. And mm-hmm. let's move, because we're both from the Rooster Teeth community, a bit more towards that briefly. Um, I, I first saw you on the Share Something You've Done thread, mm-hmm. and you just put up the, uh, the, your was it your first own piece that you promoted oh, on that thread? I think so. I think so. I was like, oh, that's, it was really, really good. It captivated me and i was like oh man maybe i'll i'll see how he does and try and get him on my show and chat to him about <laughs> music i was thinking about it even back then because i think about all these things a lot of the time i can and imagine it takes hold in your head yeah <laughs> yeah so i listened to it and it's like oh wow just like such acoustic guitar playing and and vocals all going together and i was just like oh that's, that's oh, man. great i really and, appreciate um, that because I know, sometimes i don't know if that conveys or not because i, I i'm not great on the acoustic i just kind of play i i play a little more simplistically. I play it kind of like I play a, the drums in my head, 
Uh, so I'm not sure if that always translates. In fact, the RT uh, share something you've done thread was kind of a, a testing site for me, as it were. <laughs> yeah. Was that one of the first things you'd done in the community? Because I'm not sure how active you have been. I'm not going to make any like assumptions of that. <laughs> I was just curious as to that, whether that was one of the first places you were like, I'll jump in here and see what happens. It, actually, it was, uh, honestly. I've been on the site for, I think it was around three years, but I, I didn't do much there because I didn't know anyone and I was intimidated by the concept of the forums and I never felt like I had much to add. Or if I did, it was just bits and pieces and it kind of got swallowed up in the sea of other people saying very similar things. And then I saw the, uh, like, I was like, well, I'll just kind of, finally, I, I was like, I guess I'll go back into the music forum and I'll see if there's anything there that resonates. And I saw the share something you've done thread. And I'm like, uh, okay, it looks like there's not a whole lot of posts going up every day. So maybe something I say will be heard. And I have these songs that I recorded a little while back that I, I'm curious to see if anyone like likes or appreciates in any fashion because I'm not sure how they actually sound. I mean, I'm, I'm biased in my own songs in that I like the way they sound because I wrote them, but I know that the production value is kind of low. So I just wanted to put them up someplace where other people could give me some feedback. And this seemed like but I could have designed a better spot where the people that are talking here at least have one thing in common, or two things in common, if you will, uh, in that they're on the Rooster Teeth site because they like Rooster Teeth and uh, they, they like music and they're making their own music because they're here. So why not put it someplace where it'll at least be seen, heard, and give, like, get some feedback from strangers? Um, honest feedback in that then. Um, yeah, that was, I think that, that was my first. I think that thread's one of the most important threads that I post in. Um, not just because it's people sharing music, it's that I think to really find your place in that thread, you need to listen to other people's music and give feedback or no one's going to give you feedback there. Yeah, you, you get can the put full like your community. first. Yeah, so you can like put your track in there and just abandon it and pop another one down later. But if you don't give feedback to anyone, no one's going to give you any attention. And it really, to me... It's, it really is a thread that just sh just beams community out saying this is what we're doing and uh, yeah really is one of the threads that i just i love every post that comes up on there provided yeah, it, it is people giving feedback or being like hey guys can you give me a hand with this not just <laughs> here's a track and just wander off yeah uh, anytime i try to post a song i try to make sure that i also posted a piece of of uh of not critiquing, but of appreciation for somebody else's song. And the reason for that being is it, it finally clicked why it feels like a community, you know? Uh, up until that point, I thought, man, these people are incredibly loyal to Rooster Teeth, but then it just turns out, no, they just kind of grew into a community that's loyal to each other. And uh, in the music community, like in the music community that, that spawned inside of it, they're all sharing something here and I can, I get to participate. And that, that was, that was a really cool moment when it finally clicked. Yeah, it's definitely a great thing to do. So let's take another step on the Rooster Teeth site and talk about the RT Musicians and Friends group that you are an admin of. There are 98 members as of the time we're recording this. Are there many probably now? about oh. 98, yeah, because um, Creep put a post up about there being two more members to 100 and then something was going to be happening. But that will probably be passed by the time we, uh, we get, uh, by the time this comes out. <laughs> but yeah. So um how did you get involved with that group was it just like oh this is a this is a thing let's let's jump on here <laughs> Uh that's about right <laughs> I <laughs> I saw it by happenstance I can't even remember where it came up I think it was because um Grenu on the site I hope I'm pronouncing his name right I think it was because he either he joined or he liked something in there I was like oh that's a thing I guess I'll I guess I'll go there and yeah, it took off really quickly as well. Yeah, it looks like it did. Like, Holy cow. So it's just like, oh yeah, lots of lots of members really quick and I like yeah. it. <laughs> uh but yeah, it happened completely by happenstance whereas I just I I saw somebody else joined. I thought that I that's a good idea. Why not? And uh started talking to some people in the in the in the forums inside there and uh really enjoyed that feel that continued feel of community where it was the concept of the share your 
share something you've made thread and it was a whole group based on it. It's like, well, that that's uh, that's where I want to be. That's what I want to do then. And uh, yeah, I kind of, I, I messaged, um, oh, her name escapes me now. This is terrible. Um, oh, I'm a creep. Yeah, isn't it? Creep. Is it yeah. I'm a weirdo or I'm a creep? Uh, because I'm a creep. Her tags, I'm a weirdo. I'm pretty sure it's from the Radiohead <laughs> song. Yeah, it's it's definitely the lyrics to, to Creep by Radiohead. I just don't remember which order it is. If her yeah, sponsor I'm tag... a creep and her sponsor tag is I'm a weirdo. Okay, good. All right. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to just call her a creep or a weirdo without <laughs> reason or anything. But um, I messaged her because she said she was looking for another admin. I said, uh, uh, I, my hat is in the ring. And she said, great, you're it. So... That that happened pretty quickly, and uh, I've been having fun, fun uh, helping along with the moderation of that. Yeah, it's been good though. It's been it's been fun. It's it's kind of kept me accountable to keeping in touch with things musically, uh, because it gets too easy when life gets busy. I mean, I'm I'm uh, I'm a husband and a father and a busy one at that. So it's nice to have something bringing me back to at least talking about music with uh, with people that are like minded. Ah, cool. Right, let's move on to the final questions I have for you. Sure. Uh, the first one is, if you could have any superpower, which superpower would it be, and which of your songs would be your theme song? Sure, sure. Um, I think I'd have to go with the ability to read minds in a turn-it-on, turn-it-off kind of way. <laughs> yeah, not could... permanently reading minds. That'd be... Just... I don't oh. want to go insane. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and uh, I, I guess... My theme song would probably have to go with all of me, um, if only because that that probably encompasses that concept more uh, than any of the other songs I picked. <laughs> ah, cool. Uh, let's jump on to the next question, which is, if you could only listen to one of these songs for the rest of time, which one would it be? I'd probably have to go with... Um, oh, uh, it's, 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 a, it's an easy one, too but one and two are very close, so the line blurred between them. I'm going to go with Playing With Fire. Um, I'm going to go with Playing With Fire because it's got the most wide range within the song itself, um, where it, it, it's, it, it, it wouldn't let me be bored, ever. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, I think that would I think that'd probably be the... And plus, you know, it's, it's, it's been inspirational to me, you know, in that my son is named Emery, not because of that song, but because of that band. So it would be a constant reminder of, of uh, my my continued heritage, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. Okay, cool. And something entirely disconnected from the music you've chosen so far, but what is your favorite album of the moment? My favorite album of the moment? Um, good question. Uh, I probably would actually have to go with the song that Love Me Now is on by Nine Lashes, uh, the album From Water to War which is Nine Lashes' newest album. Um, it's just this great hard rock album with a lot of a lot of real good conviction in the lyrics, real strong standpoints in their songs, uh, musically very diverse. They have a lot of um, electronic vibes in there. It's not just straight hard rock. Every song's four chords. There's a lot of emotion. There's a lot of, of movement. Um, they do one of my favorite things as far as music goes, where it feels like each song... It, it's not just beginning, middle, end. It's phases, and um, where it, it feels like you can feel the the song evolve just from beginning to end. Not just okay, we're gonna have the formula for the verse, the formula for the chorus, the formula for the bridge, and it's gonna sound just like everything else on the radio today. They uh, they they expand on that concept, and they they let each each part of the song feel unique. So I'd have yeah. to go with From Water to War. Okay, cool. That is by nine lashes. Yes. Nine. Yep, nine lashes. Nine like lashes. the number, the number nine, but written out, and lashes yep. like, uh, ouch, getting hit by a whip. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> ah, cool. Right. So with that, we will wrap up the show. Um, where can we find you on the Roosty site? And given that you're a musician, where can we find you on SoundCloud and other various musical? places that you might peddle your wares sure sure there's no weddles uh weddles to be paired that wasn't what i meant to say at all there's no uh <laughs> there's no wares to be peddled at all but um uh you could find me at mr telly m-r-t-e-l-l-e -L -L -E, on twitter uh i say some things on there sometimes 
And uh, you can find me on soundcloud.com slash second letter music. Second as in like second after first letter music. Um, I put songs up on there, but not very frequently. I'm working on doing better at that, but that means I have to sit down and record, and uh, that means I have to have time. So <laughs> it, they, they don't go well together sometimes. But uh, yeah, yeah, th those are the main two places. Uh, everything else is secondary to me right now. Okay, cool. And with that, thank you, Brandon, for being my guest. Yeah, man. Thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. This was fun. No problem. It was definitely fun. I've enjoyed this a lot. Thanks very much for listening. Goodbye.